Hello, I'm going to show you how to make a mobile, um, like a baby's mobile. I think these can be a really great way to display um, some of your sewing and stitch creations. Today I'm going to show you that with our aquarium kit. So I've got lots of uh, felt fish that we've made as part of that kit. And I think a mobile is a really nice way to display them. Um, the kit doesn't contain all the parts that you need for a mobile. So I'm going to show you those and explain what you need to do with them. I'm also going to write this up as a blog, so I'll put the blog link in the description and so you've got some uh, written instructions to refer back to as well. So first of all, let's show you the different kind of kit that you need. So I've got it all laid out here for you and you can see I've got my uh, different fish that we've made as part of this as well. And so the first thing that you're going to need is a hoop um, for the mobile. Now this is a specific mobile hoop that I've bought. Um, it's an eight inch diameter and you can see it's got these little holes in. So it's got six holes around the edge of the ring um, and that will be helpful for both hanging the fish um, and for hanging the uh, top of the mobile, which we'll, we'll actually use to hang the mobile up with. So to hang the mobile up, um, I've got a three millimeter organza ribbon. Um, I am funnily enough going with a blue theme since we've got the fish here. Um, and then I've also got, um, this is just an ordinary ring from a key ring. Um, and what I'm hoping is once we set this up, we'll have the ribbons coming up from the hoop and the little hook will then, or the, sorry, the little key ring loop will then make it easier to hang on a hook. So that's what I'm planning to use that for. Um, we've then also got some invisible thread and I've got a needle here. So the invisible thread comes with your kit. Um, so this is what we're going to use to hang the fish um, so that they really do look like they're floating. And I've got a needle to uh, do that with as well. I've got a pair of scissors to cut the thread and the ribbon. And I've got a tape measure um, so that we can measure out the, particularly the organza ribbon to make sure that that's the same length and so that it will hang evenly. Um, but we may also want to use that to measure the um, invisible thread. And then over here, I have got um, some acrylic paint and a palette and paintbrush. And that's because I'm going to paint my hoop. Um, and you can see again, I've got some blues over here. So these are artist acrylics. Um, I don't think you have to use artists. I think you could use any kind of acrylic paint. So um, you can get craft acrylic, which uh, tends to be a little bit cheaper. Um, and you could probably use kids acrylic paints as well. Um, I'm using these just because I have them in the cupboard already. So that's what I'm going to use to paint the hoop. Um, alternatively, I was originally going to use bias binding, so this is some blue bias binding and I was going to wrap this around the hoop um, and then stitch it in place, so you stitch it with some small slip stitches. Um, I've decided not to do that because I've ended up with this hoop that's already got the holes in, um, but this would be another option for covering your hoop, um, particularly if you want kind of a very fabric-y finish to everything. Um, so that's, that's another way to consider um, kind of decorating your mobile. Right, so that's all the kit you need. Um, let's go and get started. So I'm set up ready to do the painting now. Um, I've actually got a clamp here, which I'm using to hold the, uh, hold the wooden hoop before I paint it. Um, the reason I'm doing this is so that I can paint most of the hoop um, and then once it's dried, I'll, sh I'll move it around and paint the bit that's in the clamp. Um, if you don't have one of these, that's not the end of the world. Um, you can very easily paint one side, wait for it to dry and turn it over. Um, I just think this will give a slightly neater finish. So I've got that there. I've got my paints here. So I'm just going to mix, start mixing those up um, and then start to apply it. I've got quite a large brush, um, it's about half an inch that brush, and that should mean that I can uh, cover the hoop quite evenly.
So I've left this for about half an hour now. Um, it's pretty dry to touch. So I'm just going to undo it, twist it round and finish off painting that very small section that I couldn't do before. I'm just going to wrap the bit I have painted in a piece of newspaper before I reclamp it. Um, that is just to make sure if there is any still slightly damp paint, um, it's not going to transfer onto the clamp. And so let's just finish this bit off. And I'm just going to leave that to dry again um, before we can assemble the rest of the mobile. Hello, so I'm back, everything's dried. So I've got my hoop here, or my blue hoop now, um, ready to string up the mobile. Um, I used a dark blue and a white acrylic in the end to make this pale blue. Um, I haven't done it perfectly because I kind of wanted a little bit of imperfection. I wanted to see some of the white swirls in the paint as well, um, just to reflect the sea a little bit more. Um, but now we're ready to go, let's start stringing it up. The first thing we're going to need is the organza ribbon and tape measure and what I'm doing is I'm going to cut three lengths which are 55 centimeters each and um, it's really important that they are all the same length so that it hangs evenly so I'm doing mine 55 centimeters we're going to use three lengths and then effectively folding them in half in order to string them up um, I've got my other two here which I cut just a moment earlier and so once you've got your hoop um, what you're going to want to do is take the tapestry needle that was included in the aquarium kit or if you're not using one of our kits you just want a really wide-eyed needle and you're going to thread your ribbon through the needle and that's going to let you thread it into uh, your hoop so I'm just going to choose one of the holes over here and then as soon as you're through the hole, you can take your needle off again. And you're going to want to tie this off. So I'm going to tie it so that it's the um, in, on the inside of the hoop so that you won't see it when it's hung up. And I'm just going to do this as a double knot. There we go. And now uh, you may remember I said that I was going to use a keyring hoop so that I've got something to, to hang it onto. So thread that through your ribbon and then I'm going to loop it over twice. And the reason for doing that is just to stop it from sliding around so much because once we've um, put the other ribbons on as well, you're going to have three different rib ribbons that anchor that um, into the same central point. And then with the end of your ribbon, thread it back through your tapestry needle again and you're going to go into the hole that's directly opposite the first one you've done. So I've done the one over here and I'm going to do the same opposite. And when you tie this one up, just make sure that you're keeping the ends of your knots roughly the same length. So I've got um, probably about three centimetres this side and I'm going to want to aim to have the same this side so that it's nice and even when we do hang it. And again, I'm going to do a double knot. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with the other two lengths. And so you can see I've got that now with all six ribbons, or sorry, all three ribbons, but folded in half over the hoop um, so that that's hanging nice and evenly. 
and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut off those uh, tails at the end of each um, ribbon. I didn't want to do that first of all in case I had to make any changes. I'm just going to pull them each really tight before I snip them. There we go. It's time to start hanging our fish. Right, so I'm sorry about the slightly strange angle here, um, but what I wanted to do was to hang this up um, while I sew the fish on. So I've got a piece of dowel here, which um, I've anchored underneath some books on the bookshelf, and then I've just hung my loop over it. Um, so a little bit odd, I, I give you that, but it just makes it easier so we can see where the fish start hanging. Um, I'm going to start with the uh, humbug damselfish and um, what I've done is I've threaded my needle with a length of the invisible thread and I'm going to take that through the top of um, the damselfish so just on that top fin and I'm not going to pull it all the way through and I'm going to hold both ends of the invisible thread and I appreciate because it's invisible thread it probably just looks like um, I'm weirdly holding my hands up at the moment. Um, and then I'm going to thread my needle uh, through the hole I'm going to put the damselfish on. So I'm coming up through the bottom of the hole and I'm going to unthread my needle and I'm going to take both ends of the invisible thread and I'm going to tie that together in a single knot at the top. And I'm just holding the damselfish so that I support the weight so it doesn't suddenly yank out of my hands. And I'm going to pull that knot tight. And so you can see, that's my first fish. And so the next fish I'm going to hang is the yellow tang. Um, I'm going to hang this opposite um, to the humbug damselfish. And I've chosen this one because they're a similar size and shape and so by hanging it opposite, it should keep the design nice and balanced. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I've got my needle threaded with invisible thread and I'm just taking that through just underneath the top fin of the yellow tang. And then I'm going to bring my needle up through the hole directly opposite the humbug damselfish. And I'm going to hang these at approximately the same uh, height. So got a ruler here just to check that and that is going to be just about where I want to tie my knot and I'm just going to trim off the top of that knot and then we're going to go again with the next fish and so the next fish I'm going to hang is the blue tang and again I've got my invisible thread here and I'm just taking that through the top fin of the blue tang. I'm actually going to move that across just ever so slightly because this is a little bit more weighty at the front so I don't want it to hang at an awkward angle. There we go. I'm going to do the turtle now and so to hang him, him up I'm actually going to do a tiny stitch with the invisible thread at the top of his shell because we don't want him hanging sideways. And so here you go, here's your finished fish mobile. 
Um, I have hung up uh, the six tropical fish that were the real ones, um, so you've got the turtle and the jellyfish in there as well. What I haven't done is hang up any of the fish that were my own design, um, so I have got a few left over here. Um, the reason I haven't hung those up is just because the particular hoop I'm using has got six holes, and so to hang up six items leaves them really nicely balanced, creates a, a nice design and um, to try and squeeze in my other three I'd have had to fit them in between those holes already in the hoop um, and I think it would have thrown it a little bit off balance so um, I've just gone with the six um, but depending on what size hoop you get and how many holes are in that um, you can hang up as, as many as you want to. And so there it is. Um, I hope that was really useful. I hope you enjoy making your own fish and your own mobile um, and I will link out to the blog where I've written all this down and also to the kit. So if you want to buy um, the kit to make these fish, uh, you've got that there as well.